All right, now since enthalpy is a state function, our good friend Russian chemist Henri Hess, Henry Hess, he found out that no matter how you go from reactants to products, whether in one step or several, the enthalpy change for the overall chemical change is the same. All right, so here we see a reaction, carbon graphite, solid carbon in the graphite form, plus oxygen gas making carbon monoxide. This reaction's enthalpy change is very hard to determine directly because typically once carbon monoxide forms, it will react with oxygen that's present to form carbon dioxide. So what we can do is we can apply Hess's law. And we look at and pretend that we've got two steps that will take us to our final step. So again, when solid carbon reacts with oxygen, typically it forms carbon dioxide. So we'll say that that's the first step. Then the second step, we'll say carbon dioxide breaks down into carbon monoxide and oxygen. And so when you add these two equations together, the carbon dioxides cancel out. And you've got the two carbon graphite plus O2. There's one on this side, so we cancel one out. So we've got our O2. And then we've got two carbon monoxides as my product. So what I can do then is, since these two reactions add up to give my desired reaction, I can add up the delta H's of those reactions in an effort to find my overall delta H. And so the first step, that's pretty easy to determine. And again, we can measure our delta H's in calorimeters, bomb calorimeters, etc. So the first reaction, uh, typically, you find on a table that it's negative 393.5 kilojoules per mole of carbon dioxide formed. But since there's two moles formed, then my delta H would be double, negative 787. Again, it's negative 393.5 kilojoules per one mole of carbon dioxide. The second equation is the reverse of the combustion of carbon monoxide. Okay, Typically, combustion is an exothermic process, so it has a delta H of negative 566, but since this reaction is the reverse of that, it has a positive 556 kilojoules for the delta H. Now when I add these two delta H's together, that gives me my overall delta H for this reaction even though I didn't run that one directly because, again, it was too hard to do because the carbon monoxide would start forming carbon dioxide. So this is a great tool, especially when perhaps you don't have a bomb calorimeter around like we don't, so we had to run a couple different reactions to get an overall delta H in the lab. Now here's a more typical problem. Obtain the enthalpy change delta H for this reaction when you're given this data. All right. And again, all I want to do is manipulate those reactions so that when they add up, then I get my desired end reaction. So first thing I know is that I need sulfur and oxygen as reactants. So this reaction, there's sulfur as a reactant. That's great. But over here, is where my oxygen is as a product for the second reaction. So it looks like I'm going to have to flip this second reaction. The other thing I notice is that I need two sulfurs. So it looks like I'm going to have to multiply the first reaction by two. And then hopefully all comes out well. So when I multiply the first reaction by two, don't forget that also means I multiply the delta H by 2. So that's how I got negative 594 kilojoules. Second reaction, when I flip it, I also flip the sign. It was positive here, now it's negative down here. And now when I go ahead and add these two reactions up, the sulfur dioxides cancel out. I end up with two sulfurs, two plus one, that's three oxygens, so that's good. And then my two sulfur trioxide, so that is exactly what I was looking for. 
And then by adding the two delta H's, I find, find the overall enthalpy change for this reaction using the data given. Take a moment and see if you can figure out this one. Again, this is a reaction, tungsten reaction with carbon graphite to form tungsten carbide. This reaction takes place over 1400 degrees Celsius, so not very easy to measure directly. But these three enthalpy changes are much easier to get. So pause the video and see if you can figure out the answer to this. All right, so there's two different ways you can do this. One, you can see that since I only need one tungsten and this reaction has two, I'm going to multiply this by one half. And again, since I only need one tungsten carbide, but this reaction has two, I'm going to multiply this reaction by half. I also need to make sure that I flip this reaction because I need tungsten carbide to be a product. So when I do that, these are the reactions I end up with. First reaction cut in half, so my delta H is cut in half. Second reaction, I left it totally alone. And the third reaction, I flipped, so my delta H is positive, and it's also cut in half. And when I add these reactions up, the WO3 cancels out, the carbon dioxide cancels out, and I've got three halves plus two halves, so that's five halves oxygen. That cancels out. So I end up simply with my tungsten plus graphite making tungsten carbide with a delta H of negative 40.5. I also could have done it slightly differently. I could have still flipped this reaction, but then doubled this reaction. And when I do that, down here I end up with 2W plus 2Cs, making 2WCs with a delta H equal to negative 81 kilojoules. And so you would just have to recognize that I would have to divide everything by 2, and that's how I end up with that delta H in that reaction. Okay, so again, you can do what I showed you the first way, multiplying by halves. Some people don't like fractions. So if you know that you've got things multiplied by halves, you can just double the other reaction and then reduce it at the end. I hope that makes sense for you. So I'm just going to stop here now. This is uh, um, Hess's Law, and then the next video will be about the standard enthalpies of formation. Until then...